I would like to thank .tech Domains for sponsoring this video. Because why not? It is short, relevant, and pretty much inclined to what we do as developers. It has become the de facto online address for programmers working on awesome projects, as well as industry leaders launching tech initiatives, industry blogs, startups, etc. If you want to get crab off your .tech domain today, go to go.tech slash codetam to get 90% off on your one and five year .tech domains for a limited time. Remember, this is only valid for codetam subscribers. So check the link in the description to grab your awesome discount. Remember, if you're in tech, you simply use a dot tech. So what is going on everybody? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which I'm gonna give you four quick tips you can use as a React developer in your day-to-day -day workflow. So let's get started. So my first tip would be to use both React DevTools and the Chrome Inspector or whatever browser you're using. Because when you use React DevTools, you're gonna get a much more realistic view of how your code looks like because React is going to name your components. You can toggle props and see state. And basically you can get a more hierarchical view and a real view of how things are like. This is usually helpful in a lot of ways when you're working with let's say UI part of your application. Other than that, Chrome has a very rich inspector element anyway. So you can obviously always use that, but it does not has support for like React components, right? You just get HTML components here. But in React DevTools, you see pretty much all the React components, their props, children's, and basically everything you do as a React developer. My second tip, would be to use destructuring as much as possible to reduce to clean to make your code base much cleaner to see so for example if i have a lot of props here like prop one is let's say one prop two is two prop three is three and so on and so forth right so let's say if i want to get all these props right here so one way is to just do props dot prop one and basically making use of something like you know props dot prop one plus props dot prop two is equal to props dot prop three something like that right so if you're gonna see what happens is one plus two is three which is obviously fine but we are making use of props a lot of time here so try to use javascript destructuring to remove this redundancy so we're gonna make use of prop one prop two prop three from props and then we could just pretty much just go ahead and get rid rid of these props too so this makes it this makes it much more cleaner to see in the code as well as you get a nice little separation of redundant keywords keyword you had to write that is your props keyword all right my third tip is going to be regarding conditional rendering of components so a lot of times what we're going to see is we have some sort of condition right here which evaluates to either true or false or a truth value essentially and you want to render a particular component only when that condition is true now we have multiple ways to do that the first way is to make use of ternary operator so i'm going to say if this condition is true then i'm going to return this image otherwise i'm going to return something else now what that something else could be you can pass a lot of components you can pass an empty component, you can pass a null value, or you can pass an empty string. But I would recommend going with null value because it makes it it specifies that you do not want to render anything. And a null component in React is just fine. So once you do that, we're gonna see we still get the image because our condition is true. If I change this to false now, what we're gonna see is we see no image whatsoever right here. And we could just pretty much verify it from our React Dev Tools by going right here, and we could see that there is no image in the the DOM structure. The second way to conditionally render components is short circuiting. Now, by that, what I mean is basically in JavaScript we could exploit a fact that when you or when you do one or two or three, when you do stuff like this 
it does not really return you a boolean expression in c++ languages and other languages like those what you're gonna expect is if you do like true or false or something else you're gonna get a boolean result that is a boolean value but in javascript what happens is if you are oring some elements that you o r i n g that is oring some elements what is going to happen is javascript is going to return you the first truth value right so what would happen in our case if i am doing condition or image so essentially what's the deal is is let's say if this condition is true if it is true then what we're going to see that your logic stops right here and it's going to return this particular thing that is just true or false and it doesn't matter if you just write let's say if you just write true here right it doesn't matter react isn't going to show you that on the screen right but what happens is if this is false if this condition is false that is our condition variable uh, let me just get that image tag back yeah so if it is false what happens now is that react is going to look at the second expression and evaluate it if it is a truth value then react is going to return it so i'm going to hit save and what we're going to see is now we get an image so what just happened well we see that react saw this condition and it, it was false right so react instead actually javascript javascript saw this condition and it was false so it moved to the next condition that is your next thing to evaluate and kind of evaluated this and it came out to be a truthy value and the reason it was truthy was because it is a react element right so it returns something other than false or zero or undefined or whatever so once you get that particular value react is going to return that to just to confirm this what we can do is we're going to see if i write or and again a p tag saying that this would never get rendered and hit save what we're going to see is on our page we never see that p tag because what happened javascript stopped the moment it saw this particular value right here however it if it was something like null right or zero or undefined or an empty string so we're gonna see this would never get rendered on the page now because it is not a truth value in fact what would happen if this was zero right here so what we're gonna see is we actually get zero here because if there's no truth value found in the whole expression javascript is going to return the last value and we could just pretty much confirm this by saying false or undefined or zero right so we get zero here if i switch undefined and zero we're gonna see we get undefined because undefined is not the last value and if we switch undefined and false we're gonna get false as the last value so javascript is going to return the last value if it does not find any truth value in between so that was a little javascript logic but this is one way this is another way to do conditional rendering a similar thing follows with and so and is going to evaluate as long as it finds all the values true the moment it finds one value false it's going to stop there so i'm gonna say condition and um let's say p wow so it's going to run only if condition is true then it's going to come to this expression and and again returns the last expression it found to be true or the last expression in general so because condition is true we get p wow right so i know this is a bit complicated to understand but it is just how javascript works so it is really useful if you know about this it's pretty awesome if you ask me finally i would like to highlight one thing which react offers is that you can have uh multiple children's without a single parent so for example in react you are bound to return a single element from a component if you do something like this for example if i get rid of this what we're gonna see well we still have a header so let's say if i add another p tag right here i am not a header right 
if I go ahead and save this, what we're going to see is we get an error that um, right here, adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag, right? So what happens with React is instead of giving it a div every time, which is going to add up in your element hierarchy, what you could do is instead of this, just give it an empty tag, just like that. An opening brackets and a closing bracket like this, right? And hit save. So what we're gonna see now is it works out of the box. And if we take a look inside the React Dev Tools, what we could see is we see multiple children right here inside app. So if you want to have multiple children, you can use something like this. Earlier, you should have to use react.fragment and you still have to use react.fragment if you want to make use of the key attribute. But if you don't want to make use of that, you can just simply go ahead and make use of something like this, right? So these were the four tips and tricks you should know as a React developer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. That's all for this one. And I'll see you then in the next video.